Pete, I'm going to give you an update on how things are going in August and maybe you can tell me where things are going for you as well. That sounds okay. good. Kick it off. All right, I will. Uh, so, first of all, sales are strong. We've got about 115 contracts going through at the moment. We had about five settle yesterday. Uh, year to date, we've had about 12,000 buyer inquiries on businesses and we've had about 1,800 seller inquiries. We Our KPI is to have 2,500 seller inquiries a year, so we're kind of on par there. And we're a little bit under on the buyer inquiries for some reason. Um, it's definitely not a buyer's market. I've heard other people saying it's a buyer's market. I don't believe it's a buyer's market at all. Why do you say that? Uh, because um, the you know sellers can get good prices for their business. Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird because there's this uh, dichotomy that you know you would think supply and demand. Uh, you know, low supply, high demand, mm. prices go up. But it's not always just that. It's mm. other factors that determine value, like sentiment and profitability. But um, it's definitely not a buyer's market. It, it could get to that point, but it's definitely not at the moment, in my opinion. But there's some uh, micro uh, things I've observed around Australia that are really interesting, to me anyway. So Melbourne is da- down. Mm. Melbourne is a very... Uh, negative environment at the moment uh i was talking to somebody this morning who was looking at a business that was turning over three million a year it's now turning over 1.4 million a year um so for whatever reason melbourne seems to be uh i don't know if it's the first uh market in australia that's negative Mm -hmm. but it's definitely down but interestingly i just thought about this uh mid-morning this morning um, and I noticed this, uh, that rurally and, and in, in the rural regions of Victoria, the, their activity is good and their businesses mm-hmm. are doing really well. And it's possibly a consequence of the uh, rural market where, you know, rice production's been good and wheat production's mm-hmm. been good and cattle prices are good or re- reasonably good. I don't know why. But so Melbourne itself, not good. Mm-hmm. Rural Victoria, good. WA is strong. Mm-hmm. New South Wales was weak. It's improving, definitely improving. Queensland is steadily mm-hmm. retraining where it is and even growing. And I think Queensland is going to be, you know, with little things like the, the Olympics coming and the population boom here and development, you know, here because we're in Queensland. I feel like Queensland is still got a way to go. There's, I think it's going to be a bit of a hotspot for the next few yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think in many industries, uh, they're undersupplied. So you could be a provider in, you know, any many services and there's there's – of sufficient demand for your mm. product or services for you to have a very good business in the future in many, many service industries. Uh, I don't really, you know, from my observation, Tassie and South Australia are low volume for us and they're pretty steady. Um, hospitality is the uh, outlier in all of that because hospitality is still, uh, you know, even though it, it, you know, it's 40% of buying inquiries for hospitality across Australia, not just with Benchmark, mm. but hospitality is still not flourishing. Mm. So people are still wanting to get in there. Don't know yep. why, but it's not booming. Uh, the interesting thing is two points uh, to finish off on where I think we're at with August. The first thing is that, uh, but in the price range from two million to five million, demand is really strong. It's the strongest growth sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, small businesses is definitely waning, moving on. Mm-hmm. But the two to five million dollar sector, any business broker will tell you that's really booming and. We can't get enough businesses in that value space and that, mm. in that sector. The other thing that I'm aware of, which is concerning to me, is that I believe that a lot of business owners are nervous about investing or reinvesting in their business. Mm. It's probably because they're feeling like interest rates are going to rise. There was this business uncertainty about interest rates. But I think we're coming off a very low base. Mm. So if interest rates are sort of were three or two and they're five or six or seven now, it's still not a killer but a lot of business owners are just not prepared to invest in plant, equipment, machinery, new factories, improvements, because they're worried about incurring debt mm-hmm. or the interest rates or where the economy's going, which is interesting because if, if business owners stop investing prudently, then their business may stop growing. Absolutely. Uh, value can go down. You lose competitive advantage, um, competitive position rather, mm-hmm. and... I think what I'm seeing is that the savvy operators are investing heavily at the moment. The savvy operators, and I don't mean investing heavily in terms of 
dumping a lot of cash and buying assets and things like that. That's one form of investing. Mm. But the other form is actually investing in their business, in mm. their business practices, improving operations, improving the skills and knowledge of their team and mm. their forward thinking. They're looking at, okay, well, what is technology doing? What is my industry doing? What is the economy doing? Where is it going? Uh, if you look at the indicators at the moment, you've seen that some of the banks have uh, reduced the interest rates that they're uh, they're giving back on uh, some of the certain uh, deposit accounts. Mm. You can go, okay, well, if they're reducing that, does that mean that it's an indicator that maybe interest rate increases have stopped for now? Maybe it's actually going to go down. Are we potentially mm. going to see a cut in the interest rate yeah. at the end of this year? Here's another thing, just while you mm. mention it. If I'm a business owner and money in the bank is giving me 3 or 4 or 5% interest, mm. I should be investing in equipment because that's going to give me a 10, 15, 20, 30, 40% return. Provided that they're using that equipment optimally. Provided that they're... Oh, absolutely. They're, 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 but I'm saying it's cash in the bank oh, absolutely. or even stock. Yep. Because stock's going to give you a better return yep. than that 3 or 4% pittance interest. Well, the other thing is that if we think about what happened with COVID and we're kind of out of that COVID period, mm. there's actually still the uh, the legacy of COVID that we're feeling. So there's still mm. a, uh, a a period at the moment where um, there's still delays in getting certain equipment. There's still delays with machinery. There's still delays with uh, getting goods and services or goods coming in from mm. overseas. Mm. Mm. So we know that uh, there's still going to be that value sitting in there. So if you've got the equipment or if you've got the ability to access it, that could be a competitive advantage over mm. the next couple yeah. of years, next yeah. foreseeable future. Yeah. Mm. So what are you seeing? Well, a lot of our inquiries come from the eastern states. So, mm. you know, throughout Queensland, New South Wales, ACT, uh, Victoria, certainly regional, um, rural regional areas, there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of positive movements. And I'd say it's probably because, and if we look at Melbourne, for example, uh, it's less of a coffee culture and more of an ag- agricultural culture. So if I can put it that way, mm-hmm. what I mean by that is that it's a different different market space. You know, if, if you go out into regional rural Australia, a lot of it has got to do with the land. A lot of it is tied to mining, agriculture, those transport. goods, yeah. transport. And we know that when you've got good periods, good rain, et cetera, that can boost the economy of these sort of regions. So there's a lot of that positivity. Mm. What we've also seen is that the sea change of uh, people moving out from the, uh, the the capital cities and more into the regions, that sort of dri- driven um, a lot of their economies. We've also seen, I've certainly seen it in uh, certain businesses where staff no longer need to be in a capital city. So they can they can live in a regional town and in, in a regional centre and they can provide services uh, nationally. So you're seeing some of those yeah. things, uh, boom. Yeah, there's a few in Toowoomba and those sort of places. Oh, I was going to mention Toowoomba. Yeah. We've seen that in Toowoomba. Toowoomba's certainly, certainly grown. Yeah. Um, we've seen, uh, starting to see an increase in inquiries coming through from business owners that are wanting to build value, wanting to talk to us about uh, potentially selling their business in the future, which is fantastic. So I think the message is starting to get out mm. there that if you're, if you're looking at, uh, uh, I guess, reaping some of the rewards from your business at some point in time, talk to us now, talk to us first, <laughs> yeah. so that we can assist you in uh, laying the foundations. And Don't wait you. it's too late. That's right. Get ready for sales. So mm. we've got a few engagements where we're doing that at the moment. Um, we've got an interesting one where finally we managed to get uh, some of the owners in a business to see the light that, that they need to change their ways. So we're now going through a technology change, which is a huge process change within mm-hmm. the business and uh, the owners are on board. Mm. It's fantastic because awesome. we know that if they're not on board, it's not going to happen. No. They're, they're starting to do Go the right do things. It. Absolutely. Um, we had a, uh, a strategy piece accepted by the board of a not-for-profit down in uh, Canberra, which is fantastic. They signed off on it. So now we're right. talking about how we move forward and, and uh, I guess working with them as, as advisors to the board on mm. implementing the strategy. Mm. And then out of that, we've got some other pieces of work that's coming. So it's been an interesting uh, interesting month. Um, and from a people point of view, what's uh, what's exciting for me is that we've got one advisor that's sort of on, on the verge of taking the reign of uh, one of our uh, client engagements that I've been assisting him with, which is fantastic where you can see your advisors, mm. you know, you know stand up to the plate mm. and actually be able to deliver and actually yeah. go, you know what, you're almost ready to uh, to take the reins. Well, uh, yeah, it's because that's two parts. It's about their their level of expertise and confidence, but also their understanding of the business, the relationship and where that's right. they want to be. That's right. But um, h- how do you feel about uh, stress levels of business owners that you're dealing with? Are they high, low, people comfortable? or Where do you think they're sitting? Um, 
In general, and this is probably because of the type of clients that we're dealing with, the stress levels are not high. Mm. I think uh, because of the clients that have come through and who and the the type of businesses, they're actually profitable businesses. They're doing well. They're working with us because they want to work on their businesses. So most of the business owners that we deal with, they're not really getting ingrained into the day-to-day as Mm. much, if that makes sense. So they're more entrepreneurial types. Mm. They are more mature businesses. So they are turning over multi-million dollar uh, figures each year. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple that, that fall underneath that, but they've got the right mindset and they're yeah. willing to give it a go and they're willing to take the the advice and listen to us. Yeah. So the other the other exciting thing for advisory is that uh, as a result of uh, this podcast and the video series, we've actually gotten some traction. So we're now getting tapped on the shoulder to go and uh, present and speak <laughs> at uh, events. So mm. I've got several speaking engagements coming where they've asked me to go mm. and or asked us to go and present mm. and talk to audiences, business owners on certain topics. So that's mm. exciting as well. It's really good to know that people are listening. We can spread the word on on uh, business and, and some of the uh, experience mm. that we've got as uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's interesting. Let's uh, catch up again at the end of next month Absolutely. and see what's happened. Sounds good, Bruce. Thank you.